but the world could not forget or excuse the savage crimes of those who had opened that war, who had deliberately and willfully brought death and suffering to millions. To the innocent tortured civilians of Manila, for example. For these atrocities, Japan's leaders would be held responsible and would stand trial. Yamashita, Japanese commander in the Philippines, has already been sentenced to death. Hideki Tojo, Japanese war premier, faced trial as the year ended. His suicide attempt would not prevent the carrying out of justice. Behind bars were others. Admiral Shimoda, Shigamori Koruda, General Nasaharu Koma, and Kingoro Hashimoto, Black Dragon terrorists. Across the earth, the pictorial record which the world had seen of German death camps would not be readily forgotten either. Nazi officials like Joseph Kramer, the Beast of Belsen, have already paid with their lives for the crimes they committed against innocent men, women, and children. Italy, after two decades of swaggering, the inventor of fascism, Benito Mussolini, lay dead at the hands of the Italian people, with his henchman and his mistress. Adolf Hitler, who had survived a bomb planted by one of his own officers in 1944, was presumably alive until the last days of Berlin. By the best evidence, he is now dead. At Nuremberg, the Hitler gang has gone on trial. For the first time, criminal war leaders are being judged by an international court, by mankind. Goering, Hess, von Ribbentrop, and the 17 others, men who had planned world conquest and the death and enslavement of millions, are now tried under law and the law in all nations has rules for dealing with criminals. Men of all the world took hope. Peace and decency were assured as the representatives of the United Nations signed the San Francisco Charter. The lessons learned in 1945, if mankind would remember them, could make the world a better place for all men forever. That was the hope in 1945, with the Second World War ended at last.